Okay, Tori. Here it is finally. First, I want to try and go over things that you're going to need. First off, your fabric. You want to make sure that it's pre-washed. And for these masks, you want to use 100% cotton because it has a nice tight weave. Um, you don't want to use things with mixed polyester or anything else, just straight up cotton. Um, you're going to need 1 8 inch elastic. We're going to cut two 8 inch pieces for your ears your ear loops. You're going to need some straight pins. Um, I have scissors to show you how to cut out what we're going to sew, but I also have a rotary cutter because I'm going to try and show you how to do this with the rotary cutter and the mat and ruler, such as, where did it go? Boom. I can't find it. Anyway, I'll find it eventually, but a ruler that you use to cut more than one piece of fabric at a time since you're trying to mass market, you want to do this the fastest way you can do it. Um, the other thing is, is that in general, when you're mass marketing, you want to make sure that you're doing everything in stages with several masks at a time. Say if you cut out 10 masks, you cut 10 out. Then you sew the same stitch on 10 masks and then you go back and you go to the next stage with those same 10 masks so that you're not restarting over and over again. And if you're doing masks in different colors and where you're gonna be using different threads with, with this pattern, you don't really need to change threads. If you keep something neutral, you can just use one the same color throughout because there's no um, borders or piping or anything that's going to show up or seams that are these visible so your thread color isn't really relevant. Um, we'll also need a safety pin. I almost forgot to thread your elastic at the end of the project and something pointy such as this paintbrush that I'm using so I can use this in the stick just to make sure our corners are pushed out nice. Oh, also um, an ironing source. You can have an ironing board. I have um, my big ironing board, but I also keep an ironing pad. You see my iron right here. And a pad is so, um, sturdy because I've been using it for years. But I put a cover on it. But this is an ironing pad. And on the back side is another cutting board. So when I travel, if I'm going to some kind of meeting or something or I need to move my sewing area to somewhere where I don't have my big board, I still have my small cutting board and an ironing board available. So, and the ironing um, just helps you with some of the seam work to make sure that you don't have, you'll have straight lines as you're sewing. And this is the first time I've done this. So where I'm like running over my words or stuttering or whatever, please excuse an old lady. So, let me see. First, I'm going to get my fabric. I need to move the sewing machine over some. Because this isn't my normal sewing area. So, I'm trying to improvise here so that I can have everything I need to show you what we're doing. But, we're going to cut out fabric. That is, for each mask, you're going to use 15 and a half by 9 inch fabric sections for one mask so I am going to cut this into a section See, I think I'm gonna go with doing this. And this is where my rotary cutter comes in handy. Um, but like I said, you can also use scissors. I'm gonna set that ironing board over there so I have some more room. This table is actually a lot bigger, but I got half of it covered with fabric, so it's I'm 
limited to a certain amount of space here. And on my board here is a grid, and each one of these boxes is, fit, is one inch, so it makes it easy for me to fi figure out, even though I'm not at the end of the board, I can figure out figure 15 inches on here and cut accordingly. Now I'm gonna cut this a little more than 15 inches because the other, this edge right here is not smooth. So I'm gonna cut a little, this, cut through this whole thing up to 15 inches, but going over a little bit so that I can make sure that I have enough to trim off the other end and not lose any of my 15 inches trying to even up the fabric. The other thing I'm doing here is trying to make sure I don't feel any wrinkles underneath it here because I don't want to mess up the fabric cut and I keep feeling wrinkles. I want everything straight as I can. Like I said, pre-washing the fabric I've already done and if you really want a crisp new look, you can do so by using some starch and ironing your fabric if you want to, but um, that's really not necessary for this project. Okay. I'm gonna use my rotary cutter, but you can use the scissors also. I'm just trying to be expedient. So get rid of that section. Now I'm gonna turn this around. even up my fabric, putting my ruler. I wish I could show you better, but um, like this ruler is all in one inch sections and you can line up any of these lines any which way to make sure that you're getting the right measurement. Such as right here, if you look down at the bottom, I'm lining up this line right here with the bottom of this fabric crease to make sure that I'm cutting a straight line then taking my cutter and slicing off this little piece and throwing that into my scrap bucket that I keep nearby while I'm cutting fabric out because as a quilter you don't throw away any scraps at all all right I got my 15 inch piece cut and so now I need let me see which way this is the 15 so I want The next section is going to be nine inches. Again, make sure this is straight. I didn't really mean to unfold that just yet. Okay, this is the 15. So I want it to be 15 inches one way and nine inches the other way. So what I'm gonna do now is figure out what I'm doing. <laughs> Trying to make sure I cut this the right way. Okay, that's 15 and I want nine here. I'll do it this way because I wanna cut the selvage off and the selvage is the very edge of your fabric where you'll see where it was kind of like where the machine probably bound the ends of each edge. Sometimes you'll see a smooth edge on both ends. Sometimes it'll be a whole white strip. Sometimes it'll be a white strip here and a little fuzzy edge over here, but this is what's called the selvage. And you don't want to use this selvage in your um, project. You want to cut that off. So let me go ahead and get rid of that. I got a straight edge.
this over here. Okay, I'm lining up my ruler, making sure I've got nine. Here I have two sections, actually two pieces of fabric to make two masks now that are 15 by nine roughly. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stitch one, each edge along the nine inch side. And see right here, we're going to stitch right here so to fold that over and keep that over because that's going to be part of where our pocket is going to be to put the filter in so that people who want to use a filter will have a filter available. Also, this is where I use my iron to iron this down before I um, sew it so I don't have to worry about it shifting on me. Now, I tend not to pin first, but because you're starting out, I want you to go ahead and pin it so that you can make sure that it's, the fabric doesn't move on you even while you're ironing. You can put, have the pins in so that you can make sure the seam you're putting down is straight. Now this part doesn't have to be measured, what you're doing, and I'm trying to get in the camera. Sorry, this is... This little strip doesn't have to be, I'm trying to make it about a quarter of an inch because that's all about your knee. And we just want to fold it that one time. And like I said, we're going to pin. Pin this down. I'm using just really fine pins, straight pins. And I think I mentioned before, if you have straight pins that stick when you're trying to put them in the fabric, get rid of them. And these are my little pins. They're really tiny, but it just makes it easier to manipulate with the sewing machine and ironing where they're not big and don't pick big, put big creases in your project. And I'm gonna do about four pins across. In this part you don't have to worry about being extra perfect or anything um, and we're going to do the same thing on the other side I'm trying to make sure I'm doing this right so that you can see because like I said I haven't done this before make sure my lips ain't all ashy either quarter of an inch fold. Which is the basis for our filter pocket. I don't have any fingernails to pick up these pins with. And I wish I had somebody here to help me so that I could get close-ups for you. But I'm going to show you, okay. Got my pins in. I don't know if you can really see them, but here's one right here. There we go. And I've got each four pins across here. Then the same thing on the other end. Okay, now I'm gonna bring my ironing board back over. I got my iron steamed and I use the cotton setting on it and make sure you have um, water in your iron so it will steam. Like I said, this helps you save some steps. So then I'm going to just put it on top and press it. So I've got a nice sharp edge and I can actually take the pins out before I um, sew, so the pins aren't in my way. 
So I'm going to steam the other edge the same way I just did the previous one. Okay. Quick done. Once you get faster, you practice to get faster to do these little things to help you save time and mistakes so you're not busy having to turn to um, loosen up undo threads to take your seams apart because putting something together is much easier than fixing something when you have to pull it apart and then put it back together again that pulling apart pit portion of the job is tedious and you lose a lot of time where you could have made two or three of something and the time that it took you to take apart the one thing that had the mistake so Doing little things to help you not make mistakes or make your job a little bit simpler is, is important to use any shortcuts that you find are effective. Don't use shortcuts that are going to cost you more time. Um, all right, let me get the sewing machine over here. To do this with my machine, I have what's known as a quilter's foot, and so I line it up on top because I'm just putting down this one little seam, but um, if you don't have a quilter's foot, you want it to be right where, you want the edge of your fabric to sit right where you call the feed dog is, and I know you can't see just this good, but right under your presser foot where the teeth are. You want to line it up right up on top of those teeth, right next to the very edge of the plate. That way you keep a straight line. Or you can draw a line on the opposite side of this cloth. Do it from this side, draw you a line to keep you straight, but you, you learn how to you use your presser foot to guide you or as a guide, it'll help you keep straight, a straight line without having to pin and draw things. And I tend to use my presser foot a lot as a guide, and I stick with a quarter inch seam because that's what quilters use. And other than that, there are also lines on your sewing machines where you'll see it says one, and then there'll be a half of a mark, and then two, and another half mark, and then a three. And you can use those lines to help guide you as you work on projects so that, again, you don't have to pin everything down. So, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and do this one the way I'm telling you to do it with the presser foot. And on this side, since I'm already positioned, and then I'm gonna show you how to do it with a line, drawing a line on your um, fabric. Now on your presser foot, starting off your projects, whenever you start sewing, you wanna make sure your presser foot's down. You got enough thread coming from your with it until you got an, about a I guess six seven inch length of thread make sure that top thread is going under your press through your press of foot under to the back and your bobbin thread also is going to the back um, that makes for a neat project then you want to drop the foot make sure you're lined up Find your back threads, hold on to them while you start by rolling your needle down, rolling your arm, whatever this thing is called, rolling it till you have your needle through your fabric. That's where you want to start. And let me get my foot right. And I'm going to go ahead and start sewing. Following that line that I told you about along the side of my feet. And just watching where it's going. Just keep an eye on where you want it to go. Keep your fingers from under the machine. I mean, under the feed dog so you don't get a needle through your finger. Oh, lovely. I ran out of bobbin thread.
grab another thread. That's the other thing I did the other day because I'm making a lot of different masks that have um, stitching you can see on the outside outlining the project and so I needed a lot of different colors and so I bought a bunch of different well I bought a bunch of empty bobbins and then I put different colors threads in them so that I can switch easily and quickly but now I'm gonna get this threaded bobbin back in feed my top thread down so I can catch my bobbin thread, pull it up, pull the bobbin thread through and to the back. Close everything up. All right, now, this is one of those situations where I've done this in the middle of the project, which you really hate to do, but since this side won't be seen, won't be openly visible, it's not a big deal. But if this happens and it is visible, depending on how fine the project is, you may want to take out the whole seam or you just make sure that you've lined it up as straight as you can with the thread where the thread ended and start your project like a quarter of an inch back so that you make sure that you don't have a crooked line if possible. I can already tell mine's going to be crooked a little bit just because of where the thread went off. Well, no, maybe it's not. Okay. Let's go back again. trim my thread right here get rid of that and the threads on the back I wish I could have better lighting should have done this during the daytime okay now that's the back of it which is immaterial but this is the front and you can see the little area where I had to overlap but because this won't be seen I'm not worried I'm going to do the opposite side and I'm just sewing on the, I want to sew on this side as opposed to this side so I can make sure that it looks good now if I was the one thing you want to be careful of is that you may want to sew, sew with the wrong side up when you're doing this so that you can make sure you sew within the area that you fold it over so you don't have to end up taking something apart but I already know where my seam is and where my stitch is as opposed to where my fold ends. So I know that I'm getting it covered, but if you wanna make sure you're covering it so you don't have to go back and correct anything, sew with this side up. And I'm gonna do this just so I can illustrate what I'm talking about. Lift my needle up so I can catch it in my project. Threads. This is a little awkward doing it while I'm standing up because I'm used to doing this when I'm sitting, but this is the only way I can figure out to show it to you. I'm sorry that thing is bouncing a little bit. Let me see if I can get this closer. Tell Buddy I need his services. I don't think that's going to work either. I just got poor lighting. Let's see if I can figure out something. 
sorry for that pretty thing and I don't know how to make this thing pause and then pick back up on the same spot so you're gonna have to bear with me um, I'll figure out if I can splice it later if not there's my explanation all right so now we're gonna start and I'm doing this with this fold up so you can see where it, the edge is so you make sure you catch it in the right area I really wish that we kind of skype because this is it's just really weird. Okay. There we did it with catching the fold, making sure we didn't miss up a fold so it's under there all the fold is caught in the thread and this may be oversimplifying for you and if it is I'm sorry I'm just trying to make sure I don't leave any base uncovered all right next thing we're gonna do now is take this with this snip off these threads which I don't worry about where threads fall because there's gonna be a lot of threads and trying to mind where they're falling when you're trying to get a project done is um, too much work to slow you down too much I should say all right this is what we're gonna do right here we want to put one on top of the other you know what I did miss see this is what I was talking about right here on the first one right there I missed the fold I sewed past it I caught the rest of it, but right here I missed it. Either the fold was short, this part of it was shorter than the rest, or my machine drifted, but it looks like the fold was probably shorter. So anyway, this is what I'm talking about you don't want to do, because then you need to go back and sew it if this was going to be visible, but because this won't be visible, it's not an issue right now on this particular project. But anyway, I'll put the right sides together, and then on top we're going to have one fold on top of the other fold so that on the back side you see one line only and actually this is where you might want to use a thread that matches because I didn't realize I've just changed this design from what originally had planned on doing I just thought it would be better so, yeah, you're going to have to um, watch your thread colors on that one, on one side of this. One side is not really seen, but the other side is when you finish. Actually, that's not what I want either. Scrap all of that. Let me pause. <laughs> 